All right, here we go. Yo, 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 what up, though, man? I got gangster giggity, Mr. Uh, what you call it, Mr. Answer right back. The People's Champ. The People's uh, Champ. Terrence Civilian Williams. Yeah. Yeah, mogul state of mind. We in the building. Hey, man, I appreciate you sitting down with me. Uh, been trying to get this interview for a minute. Um, I know you've been cooking like grease online since you didn't got home, man. Hit the ground running. For those who may not know who you are, you are the younger brother of Birdman. Thanks. Uh, Cash Money Records. Um, what what has it been like, man, since you've been home? Because you've been home over a year now, right? Yeah, I've been home a year and eight months. Year and eight months. What what was the biggest adjustment coming home for prison you felt like you had to get used to? These cell phones. Yeah. Man, listen. The cell phone drive me crazy. Um, nobody gave me the game on locking your cell phone. Yeah. So when I first come home, I stayed in New Orleans for one day. Then baby, the man, get from down there, cutting up. So I, I had the people, I got up to Fort Worth. Mm. So I'm living with this female. I ain't thinking that. Ever. I set my phone down. She up in that thing. And <laughs> yo, yo, so it wasn't until, bro, like six months later, what about Potter tell me? Man, put the lock. I said, what you mean a lock? Put it on there where you got to press the number. I said, now nah, y'all tell me. I'd have been busted by the... <laughs> <laughs> bro, so um, another thing, bro, that just be... Uh, I had kind of freaked out with the navigation system. Yeah. Because there was no way I was like, anybody going to be able to tell me that this sister going to bring me here. Or there. I, and, bro, I, I was driving one day, and I jumped when the lady said, turn around. I said, whoa. <laughs> I'm really free for number one and number two, man. This thing on his phone telling me to go here and bro, this stuff. First we been, and then Walmart. You know, for to 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 go in Walmart and be able to have to scan and do your stuff. I'm like, man, you know, I'm thinking back in the man, I've been stealing all this stuff, man. I ain't about to pay. You know <laughs> so, bro, when I first go to Walmart, it's like three, four bad bras on the end. So I got my groceries right here, and I'm looking at them. They looking at me. I'm like. They talking, I'm like, all right, now that's y'all on the clock. Y'all will be working. Yeah. Why y'all not over here ringing me up? So she looking like, what's up? She's like, oh, you do that yourself? I was like, oh, my, I apologize. I just got the feds. I ain't know about all So she had to come over and she assist me. But I didn't know, bro, because I, I just knew it was a carriage register. Right? And I'm thinking that they got to come in, ring me up. But it was a self. So it's a lot of, bro. I've been home a year and eight, bro. And it's still stuff that I'm learning. I get excited about. I be like, whoa. Like, oh, I just got me a game the other day. PlayStation 5. Okay. Um, it took me three days to finally get it going because you got to do all this cold stuff. That stuff be irritate me. I finally got on um, Call of Duty. I'm jumping out the sky. I made it to the ground one, two times. The rest, they shoot me in the sky. Somebody shoot me. I'm like, what's going on? How do you keep shooting from the back, right? So I, 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 I got off that game. I got on Grand Theft Auto. So I'm driving. I learned I could take people call. I never made it to my destination, so that got boring because I had an 18 Well, I'm on a bridge. I'm running over people. But I, I wanted to get the guns and go wild. But, yeah. I, but bro, I, yo, it's been fun, bro, because it's like I'm in my own little zone, my own world, and I ain't bothering nobody, bro. What, what's the longest stretch you've been out of prison? Like the longest? A year and 11 months. In your whole life? Yeah, a year longest... and 11 months. When I first wow. started going to juvenile jail, 1990, I broke out. I had got juvenile life, but I broke out in 91. Um... I broke out September 91. I went back to jail January 91 for a uh, crack and an auto theft. They let me out because I gave a fake name. Yeah. February, I get caught with a gun in the, in the Magnolia Project on Willow Street. I give them a, a, a fake date of birth because I didn't want to go back to juvenile. Yeah. I go to adult. They took my fingerprints. About eight months later, they found out I was juvenile. They sent me back to juvenile. Mm. By me... By being my first adult felony, right, they circle felony, but it's supposed to be a state misdemeanor. So juvenile released me for one month. Then they picked me back up. And from now, just going back and forth, back and forth to jail. When I finally got out uh, April, April the 16th, 1996, I stayed home from then to March 6th, 1998, went to the Fed, got life. Mm -hmm. So all my life, back and forth jail, in and out, juvenile jail, state jail. Federal. And now in this, you said you've been out a year and eight months. Year and eight, so I'm trying to catch that year 11 first. Do, before we get into your story, do you ever fear like 
you know, I, I heard somebody say when you was in jail, when you in jail, you dream about being out in the free. And once you out in the free, you had dreams that you back in prison. Do you ever have times when you close your eyes, you wake up like from a nightmare, like you lock back up? Is it a fear of ever going back? No, because I made a promise to myself that I, I would never go back and sell drugs again. The internet is the new dope game for me. Mm. You know, the internet been good to me. So, um, bro, my my honestly, my dreams be waking up with two, three bad bros laying next to me. Um, my movie being put out. I got a nice big house. I'm just enjoying life. I don't have no bad dreams. But um, my mind always on where my next dollar going to come from because mm. cause I, I got a model. As long as they print money, I'm going to get some money. Yeah. So my, I focus on going and get this money, get this money, bro. So... Nah, I don't, I don't, I, but I got guys, like my youngest son, he's in the fade fighting two bodies right now. Mm. But um, he got 15 on one case, he got a racketeer and he fighting. So my mind is never on going, or I'm in prison, none of that. My mind be on, man, how you going to get some money tomorrow? Gotcha. You know, what's, you know, what's your next mission? What Staying focused, because I know there's people in prison depending on me, and there's people out here that's looking to me like for answers, you know. Man, you come on to the internet by storm, you know, how can we do this, or, or you know, what? What can we do or what to do when people uh, uh, disrespect you? Yeah. You know, you're a street dude, so how you able to – I know there's prison, bro. When people uh, bury you in that prison. Bro, I got a homie. I need to put you with him, man. He just come home, been home a week. Man, did 31 years in prison. Uh. 31, bro. And guess what? I laugh because he's just like how I was. How you do this? Hey, man, the cash app this. And I'll be, <laughs> bro, bro, up to about – and let me tell you what's crazy about this, bro. I, tell a, I told a story about him before on my channel. I met his big brother before, his sister before, and him before on three different terms, right? And then we all became close. His brother had like 100 and something years in Angola, but he wanted to get his time back. He did, he did like, he be locked up since the 70s, come home in, in the 2000s. Um, well, his mother died, his sister died, uh, father died, brother. So his last sister left. Uh, he had like hundred something years in Angola, but he died of giving him parole. Yeah. He contacted his sister in Fort Worth. She agreed for him to come stay there. So she signed all the paper, right? July of, of this year. She dies on him. Man. Last one. So they kept him to September. So having his niece just accept him for Atlanta. And now uh I just paid for him to go to Atlanta. He leaving Monday, bro. Okay. So he leaving Louisiana because when they get out of Angola, they put him like a little house thing until they get themselves take these classes then. Whoever your family member gonna accept you, then they let you go. So he, uh, he's excited, bro. And he only, he, bro, I called to him, bro, because he had been home a week now. And I had somebody hit me on Instagram and I just talked to him. He was like, man, they said, I'm staying two lives. What you mean? What you did? Man, I got in the shower and I was washing my boxes. So I'm thinking about, you know, in jail, <laughs> yeah. you know, we do that, right? Yeah. I say, bro, yeah, they got a good point. He said, well, bro, you know, man, sister put in the washing machine. I only have two pair of drawers. So I got the one on washing and then, and I just a dry. I was like, yeah, you got a good point too. You yeah. know what I'm saying? But, bro, he just, yo, he's still holding on to the name Juvenile. I say, bro, you 49 years old, bro. Ain't no more Juvenile, bro. Man, that's my name, Juvenile. So he, he, I, I hooked him up on Instagram last night. Okay. Been out 30, he got out after 31 years. Hey, what's his at? You know it? Oh, uh, Juvie, Juvenile Juvie 9, because he's still repping that Night Ward. They... He's still, <laughs> listen, bro, it was him, and then I just missed the old head, because I wanted to interview him. This old head been down 61 years in Angola. Shit. He just went home. Uh, they all went to the mall. Can you picture old heads just get out of Angola, go into the mall? This old man, they, they said he took all running. He was so excited, bro. But, <laughs> 61 years, bro? Yeah, that's Come what... on, man. We wasn't even born. Damn. Man, bro, but I was so happy my partner home, bro. I was like, I said, I would have I liked for you to come to Fort Worth. I could have made sure you was, but I still got him, though. He, he excited, man. He learned his phone. Everything he going through, I'd be laughing because I was going through that. Yeah. And I just let him, you know, wrestle with it. for. I'd be like, that'll keep him busy for a while. Got you. you. Know? Now, yeah. I, I want to take it kind of back to the beginning a little bit. Kind of understand your upbringing. Now, now you growing up in Louisiana, and uh, what part of New Orleans it was the? Uptown, the 17th Ward, 17th Holly Grove. Ward. Holly Grove. Right. You said Holly Grove, that's yeah. what it is? Right. Um, you growing up, you grew up with your mom and your dad? How was well, that? Well, my father was dead, in and out. Okay. I basically grew up with my mother and my grandfather. Okay. But my father would come and go, come and go. It was like never in a household with all of us, no. How many, how many children did your mom have? My mom is me and two more boys. Okay, so she had three total. Right, And, right. and Birdman is... 
your brother from your dad's house. Right, right. Got you. Um, coming up in that household, man, because you got into the streets early at like mm -hmm. nine and ten. Yeah. What was your upbringing like that with your your mom and your grandfather that led you to the streets? You know what? And I always pay attention to that when people say that, right? My mother tried the best she can. My grandfather's a whoop us, bro. His old man's have a lock. He's tail butt up, right? But it wasn't until, like, when I was living in Gertown, I was on the swimming team. You know, well, I had learned, that's where I first learned how to steal at, too, A&P. But it wasn't until we moved to the Calio Project, right? I was like eight, nine years old. Mm -hmm. And I'm always in the window. And I see these little young boys with polo shirts on, nice tennis shoes on. And I'm like, I want that. Because now we're in the Calio, bro. We're in the Calio in the two-bedroom apartment. It's my Aunt Linda, her boyfriend, her son, LeVamp, her other son, Curtis, and her daughter, Deuce. That's five. Yeah. You got my mother, me, and my two brothers. Nine of us in the two-bedroom apartment. Man. In the project. I don't tell you the red ramp. So I'm always in the window looking, and I see these young boys getting money, selling drugs, and I'm like, I want that. I like that. I want to enjoy that, bro. One day I remember going to the store. I remember the little young boy around my age. And he used to always give me a few dollars. Like it would be like a dollar two, little, little small, buy me something in the store. He used to always give He was hustling though. Yeah. And that same little boy wound up getting killed in the driveway. You know, so I always enjoyed the fast life, you know. And once we moved out to Cali, we moved across the street to Johnson Street, one bedroom apartment. My mother would take her mattress off the bed put it on the corner over here on the floor for me and my other two brothers lay on the floor. Mm -hmm. And in the kitchen, bro, we had a we had one table, we had a, a cooler for a refrigerator. And to this day, I don't eat this. We had a string bean, can of string bean, and a can of cranberry sauce. Well, that's all we had to eat. Wow. And um, I was like, no, I ain't doing that no more. I ain't never eating this ever again in life, bro. Yeah. So we started going to um, Winn-Dixie. Hey, man, can I, told you, can I help you with your bags? You know, put your people bag, put the car. I tried to... Really like that when you, you know, do the window. That really ain't work good for me. But um, I started stealing out the barber since taking the fake chains. And But it wasn't until we moved to uh, Phillips Street is when I really got introduced to the life of crime. Because baby and them in the game. I'm young. I'm, 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 I, had broken my, I had broken my cousin's house. Like My mother stayed here. My cousin stayed here. Then there was another house over here. The little boy that people still had to beat him up. Mm -hmm. So my cousin had it in television back in the days. Um, and then we had Atari. Yeah. Uh, so for people who don't know, in television, Atari was video games. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I was going to elementary school and uh, I went broke in the house and to steal his game. But so happened I went on this side of the house and on this side, you know, to get the alleyway, the people next door see me. And them people don't like me because I should be beating their little son up. Yeah. He called the police something. I go to jail, police come and get me, put me in the police car. So from there, I, I was like, okay, I got a taste of this. Birdman him come around one day. He wasn't Birdman, then he was baby. Brian back then. Yeah. Um wait, how, how much older is um baby than you? Like maybe uh five years. About five, five years. six years. So cause you him being your dad, son, when mm -hmm. did you meet Baby? Did you always know him all your life? Well, or? Yeah, when I was young, because they had nowhere to stay, so him and Slim came not stay with us for a little period of time. Okay, so Slim and Baby got the same mom and dad? But yeah. Yo, so, your, so Slim is also your brother? Mm hmm Got yeah. you. So their mom died when he was young. Right. And from what I understand, Baby, does Slim go into foster care as well? Yeah, but both together. Yeah. Both. So they both go to Canada with their mm -hmm. uncle? Mm-hmm. And then how did they get back to New Orleans? Because my father sent for them. Was okay. Like, I want my children. You know, I, you know my, cause my father got a lot, bro. It was like about 20-something of us. Man. It's a lot of us. Did you know all 28-something of No, but when I okay. went to the fed, I started meeting them and talking to them. This one and that, you know, started meeting Because a lot of them had heard about me. Got you. I'm the youngest, but I was the most wild one, you know? Got you. So I had met a lot of them, started talking to a lot of them. Um, but how, baby... And Slim and I be still stay tight because they was in a dope game. Mm. They hustling. I'm young, so it's like, you know how you be young, ah, you go talk to that old gangster talk, but you don't really know if you really about that. Yeah. So I was do that. I said talk a lot. Man, I'm with this. I do this. I do this to that. Hey, he put me to the test one day. You know, of my first time with a gun. Yeah. 
At this time, I'm about 11 years old. Okay. First time shooting someone. Um, At 11? Then, yeah. See, and, and not to interrupt you, <clears throat> but I'm, I'm glad you said that because I recently just interviewed um, him man Nate Boone Craft. Mm-hmm. part of Best Friends. And he was telling stories of him selling heroin at 10. His first time shooting somebody, he actually killed somebody, him and his best friend. They were like 11. And people was like, man, no 10-year-old, 11-year-old shooting, catching bodies. Mm-hmm. And so, but go ahead, my bad. So you, you, you shot somebody at 11. Um, Let me tell you why. Let me say this. And I understand why people say that because of this. Look at today's time now. The average two, three year old is way advanced than we were. Yeah. Because all this technology. I be sitting back listening to these little young two, three year olds, and they be smart. All them, and they talking real good. I'm be, be like, whoa, all that baby is, you know? But yeah, when I was 11, man, listen, uh, I had got, I, I, we used to hang on a place called Second and Daniel Neighborhood, selling weed. So um, I remember my best friend, Mosquito, he graduated selling crack. I ain't, I was scared. Like, no, nah, I'm gonna stick to the little. We go buy weed and get roll them up. The little puffies we call them. The, you know the little, the little white boy. But um, I come around the corner. Guy trying to jack my partner up. Shot. I shot in the air. That's what I always tell people. I shot yeah. in the air. So that triggered us a, a little beef. That's how we met Hot Boy Sterling. Mm. This was his friend. He was a little older than us. He want to know who had the heart to shoot his friend. So yeah, I had been ten, eleven. Man, that was nothing back then. Now, um, the parents are more involved for yeah. us. Like, you know, where your child at? What's going on? You know, back then, we were wild. Like, my mother go to work. My mother used to work at the Sheraton Hotel. So, bro, I'm up and gone. Oh, we would steal cars. Hawk in front of my mother's little sleep. When she go to work, like, five, six, seven in the morning, she back on the way. Y'all better get this car in front of my door. I'm going to call the police. Now we know it's time for school. Okay, the donut man about to drop them donuts. So let's go get our breakfast. Yeah. So we still in the donuts. 10, 11, that wasn't nothing back then. Damn. Now it's... You know, uh, the child care and all them people involved. Yeah. Now, nah, you came up whooping to him. Back then, you, the neighbors, anybody, what man whooping, you be like, all right, I'm gone. Yeah. Now, you can't put your hand on them children, man, you going to jail. Yeah, even your own, you for know? sure. So, but I understand why people don't believe it because some people be like, if they don't see it, they don't, you know, I can't yeah. believe it. I've never been around. I don't, I can't, no, I can't fathom that. But, yeah, we was living like that. We was young and wildin', man. So, so here it is, Birdman move in with you, you said around elementary school. Baby mm-hmm. move in with you around elementary school. When did you notice they was in the dope game? It wasn't until we moved to Phillips Street that when he came around. Because, okay. see, in, in Gertown, we were young, young children. Yeah. So now we, like, about, it's like 80, it's in the 80s. I know it's in the 80s. But at this time, now he's driving a nice car. So I'm coming around, and I'm sending lots of money, yeah. crack, you know, powder. Seeing the powder, you know, the powder bags back there. I'm seeing I'm like, oh, okay, so this what's going on. What they doing? Let's see the 38s, the 22. Yeah. Now I want to shoot this thing because I got the heart. But I've never did it, but you know, you'd be like, I'm ready for this. I want yeah. to try, you know. And so it happened when I got in the car, when he could pull up, I jumped in the front, said, happened with Big Bro, car. And I get a gun in the back, whoa. That was a lesson. Don't never jump in the car unless I might sit in that back seat. Mm. You know, I was like, okay. So over the years, I'm always getting schooled. That's why I, when I was in the street, I played the game so good because I was schooled by some of the best stuff. Yeah. You ain't getting back here because I know it hits out on me. So it's, it's certain people not about to ride in that back seat. Yeah, that's just not gonna happen with me. You know, we we like we might hook up. You from downtown, from uptown, we might hook up, go do a lick, but you might kill me on the lick. Yeah. Now I gotta watch you. I gotta I gotta get back. I gotta make it back to the project. I got my children, my mother, or whatever. You know, with the homies, people depending on me. I gotta make it back. But um, coming up in New Orleans, bro. New Orleans is majority all ghetto. Yeah. So you're gonna come into the crimes. You're gonna, you know, now you got a pinky finger full, made it out, you know, to go do be successful for it, go play football or go do something. But majority of the people, they gonna you right here. You can't duck it. Now at that time in New Orleans, is it just mostly 
Project Beast, is it gangs in New, New Orleans? Is it drug crews? What's, what, it, what is it? No, nah, we ain't have no gangs, bro. Um, I remember some Crips came in the 80s to New Orleans. Um, across the river, we did have, in Mary Poppins, we had a uh, blood set. Yeah. We did have that, but for the most part, it was neighborhoods. Yeah. Beefing uh with neighborhoods, you know, up third wars. Like we I live yeah. in the third war. My ward got the Magnolia Mel for me and the Cadillac Project. Okay. Then we got the tenth war, which is like maybe twelve blocks from us. You know, so we got the seventeenth war that's uptown, thirteen war, twelve war, eleven war, then you got downtown, fourth war, fifth war, sixth. We had wards. We didn't have gangs. Got you. So mm-hmm. I interview. I don't know if you saw this, but I interview Bonnie Hunter BJ, mm-hmm. and I, I I asked him about Birdman and Wayne them banging blood, and he talked about a time he had to push up on them and check them because they <laughs> yeah, come to like the that. BT Awards, yeah, yeah and they had the flags in the wrong pocket. Yeah. So if New Orleans didn't come up with blood, when did Birdman actually become blood? I was in the Fed, right? Yeah, but I put it together because I'm one of the ones that always analyze a certain situation. So now I was like, I always liked to wear red when I was home. Yeah. You see a lot of people with me wear red. I even had a red Benz before, so, but I had a blue one too. But anyway, Birdman used to run like 100 deep with the homie from each project. Because I had cars. I said, look, bro, it's time to put all that aside, bro, get the homie. So he got all the homies from different projects that was beefing with me or whoever at one time, and they went on, on, a, on a road, on a tour. But I guess a lot of them young homies start realizing, man, baby making all these millions and we ain't eating. Man, we going home. So it went from 100 start going down, 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 down. So I'm guessing now, if I go in on the bang this red flag, whenever I put up in town, what's popping my wagon, hit whoever off, I'm good. Yeah. You know, so it caught me by surprise. Then it just like it became a fad and you had to be a blood. Mm. So that stuff just spread like wildfire. You know what I'm saying? I still be tripping off that my city got bloods now. Do you consider them real blood? No. No. Uh-huh. No, but I respect them because yeah. Birdman, they know we didn't come up like that. Yeah. But I'm not going to disrespect. They banging this. They really repping this now. So I'm not going to make y'all false flag and y'all that flag there. No, I'm not going to I'm not gonna play with them like that because I don't, because that'll open the door for dudes to disrespect you. Yeah. Or, or, or like, like I'm Muslim, so I don't want them to say, well, you ain't, you know what I'm saying? They'll try to find, so that what y'all doing. Keep that over there. Got gotcha. you. You know what I'm saying, but I don't, I don't, I don't like it. I don't approve of it. Now, who is older, B- Burn Baby or Slim? Slim the oldest. Slim is the oldest. Yeah. Um, do you know who ended up putting them on to get on a drug game? Like who's their supplies was? I don't know exactly, but I know Slim. Slim dealt with a white dude. Mm. I remember signing some insurance papers. I would later find out this man getting drugs for them and put me up for collateral on insurance. Wait, what? Yeah. Bro, I had a wild life coming up, bro. See, that's why, see, a lot of people, I don't want to speak on a lot of stuff with Slim either, but a lot of people see the business mind laid back Sugar Slim. Yeah. Slim was a gangster coming up, man. But he was smart and quiet about it. Just like how he is now. Yeah. That's why I got a lot of my demeanor. A lot of people like, why you like to laugh? You be playing a lot, but you still put in the work. A lot of people, if I'm around you, I'm going to pay attention to you. I'm going to study you. And if I see something about you I like, I'm going to incorporate that in myself. Got gotcha. you. You know, I'm not one of the ones to say to say I want to learn or yeah I like that or no I don't like that. No, I'm I'm the type of person. If you a step or you real or you, something about you I like, I'm I, I've always gave people their props. Dude could tell you from my city, even if I ain't like you. Yeah. But we enemies. I'm like, yeah, he for real, he for real with it. But I got something for him. Now, some people may say, um, 17 Ward or Holly Grove is not really part of Uptown. Some people say that that is what like. From the third mm-hmm. to the thirteenth, is all uptown. Anything outside of that is not really considered uptown. How how do you respond to that, bro? Let me say this. I uh, I uh, keep it lame. I've never heard that. Mm. Actually, I heard uh, no rep care podcast say that. And when I heard him say that, I say, since I've come out, ne- we've never had a problem with that. I've never heard nobody say that because uptown, I mean, when you're in the third ward, yeah. at some point when we driving 
And that's another uh, uh, conversation we would have to have because when you coming up Louisiana or going to Earhart Boulevard or whatever, yeah. When you keep driving, you're gonna uh, come. Well, when you coming up Louisiana, they go from Louisiana, pass up Mr. B's where Mr. B used to be at. Yeah. Where they, they had a Bunnybury factory, they got the canals right. By the time you get where the Tarzan Rush was at, that's the Seventeenth War. So at what 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 separate? You know, is this this Earhart? This is block right here separates. How you know? Because you're gonna get the the third one, Seventeen War connected. Gotcha. Because you know, like then BG um this partners in crime. Yeah, they should be beefing back and coming up. Yeah. And, and partners in crime is from Seventeen, right? Yeah. So, I come up with them. So so what exactly was I guess BG talking about with 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 that then? No, what it was, he wasn't talking about they went from uptown. What it was, partners in crime was signed to a record label called uh, Big Boy Records, mm. and. They had Partners of Crime. They had Mystical. Uh, I think the Ghetto Twins. They had a nice little roster over there. Yeah. And Cash Money, they was the only two labels in the city that was had somebody. Yeah. So they was going at it. Partners of Crime had that song, Pump the Party, Let the Good Time Roll, Thank You, Miss Lily. They had some hits. So that's on Big Boy Records. Big Boy Records, right. Gotcha. Yeah, they had some hits, bro. So, um, you know, Cash Money, they thugging. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So it's like, they but Partners, see, their order was... Uh, uh, Mr. Mina had been in college, so he very educated. He's smart with the pen. Yeah. You know, so they was able to go back. And then they're from the hood, too, and they're going to fight. It wasn't scary either, you know? Yeah. But, um, yeah, man, that was a nice little uh, uh, beef they had going on, bro. <laughs> bro, I'm talking about they were going back and forth. I, I remember pulling up on Mr. Mina um, and letting him know, like, you know, y'all keep it on wax, you know, don't, nothing. And I was never a disrespectful guy because I've always been small. Yeah. And crazy, let me tell you what's crazy about that. I never told him about his story, right? He wrote a book recently, and um, him and I, I interviewed him on a thing, and and he talked about that in the book about me putting up on him and uh, how <laughs> I was respectfully letting him know, man, nothing but not happen to Bird, man. You yeah, know, I'm, this what you know we coming, you know. But I I wasn't disrespectful, but a person that uh, get your message, they know what type of person you are. Yeah. Um, but they they got some hits, bro, and they was on, bro. They had some song. They was. Uh, they was going at it. I was man. At one point, uh, Birdman, you know, when we had, when we had the meeting, and this is why they mad when we took. We had that meeting. And we had the round table with the two two six. That was some real stuff. They don't want this stuff in my documentary. Um. So wait, break break into the meeting. So who calls? So is this y'all normally do meetings, or is this the first ever meeting? This the first ever meeting. Okay. Slim called the meeting. Birdman doing his stutter mosquito me, and we discussing what's going on. And Birdman, like, bro, listen, we ain't in the game, but big boy record, them boys snapping. Yeah. And I'm not about to just, I done left the game alone and, to, and, and do this music stuff, and they had them to think they're going to shut me down. Yeah. So I'm like, bro, listen. So the way if you really want to get rid of a problem, and I, don't, I, should, I said it before, but I shouldn't say it because I don't want to put stuff in people's body. Because I mean, that's how I be saying a lot of these rap be faking, right? Yeah. I'm like, bro, if you really want to just get rid of that whole little crew, that whole label, get somebody to do a concert. So a kind of back then they had a little, uh, was that a little rider package? Yeah. But all you want, all right, this is what you want, all right, they're going to be right here. You can go ahead and crush everybody. Mm. You know, and Slim was like, no, we're not going to do that. We believe in our artists. Yeah. We're going to let them deal with this on the way. But, pop, you know, we need, yeah, we know, yeah, we got y'all for the street. And then I started making the rules. Listen, man, don't talk to them people. If anything happened, da, 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 I'm laying the rules down. <laughs> you know, but uh, and violated the rules, bro. You know, uh, so that you know, bro. This, I just sometimes sit back and think about my life. But, what was the rules? What was the main rules? These are like y'all commandments. Yeah, don't, don't no cooperate with the government. Don't okay. don't see the police in my city had a thing where they would play these kind of games. Like they had people that was informants, right? Yeah. And they know if you real, they'll try to pull up on you there because they, they 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 hood too, so they'll pull up on you just to talk. Yeah. And try to have putting people in mind like you might be working with the police too. You know what I'm saying? Gotcha. So I, my, my thing was listen, bro, don't never post something and talk to no cop. I don't care. We don't never talk to the police. And y'all how old at this time in y'all twenties? No, we ain't teen. We teenagers. Oh, so y'all young making these rules. Yeah, we're okay. Gotcha. Yeah, I was a teenager. But I went because I went to the Fed at twenty three. Gotcha. So I was young with foreign cars, clothes, girls. You know, jewelry. Yeah. Um, ride, I used to get on a Greyhound bus and ride in New York and get the heroin and come back. Yeah. What's the most you think you, uh, how much do you think you was making a day at the height of? Good 20000 
20 bands. Damn. Because I was the type of dude like this. And sometimes it might be less, it might be 10, 15. I was, now, my co-defendant, Blabber. Yeah. Now, he was eating, right? Because I was the type of dude like this. I didn't like selling drugs every day. Yeah. I would prefer to rob you or take a hit. Mm. Selling drugs, it just took too much of my time. Now, were you robbing just civilians or you was robbing no, dope dealers? I never dealers? robbed a civilian. Never in my life robbed Other dope niggas. You just, yeah, I'm going got to you. dope boy. You make it, I'm going to take it. Because mm. the only thing, two things going to happen with that. You're going to you uh, send a hit at me or we're going to go to war. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We're going to keep it in the streets. So that's why I ain't, but I've never robbed a civilian. Got you. Never, bro. I've never... Yeah, I ain't gonna get no. I'm going to jail. I put a man. He just worked for his hard earned check, and I'm to my kitchen at the check can and stick him up. Yeah, man, that man called the police on me. <laughs> no, yeah. man, I ain't doing that. But I know one thing: that dope boy is not even tickets to make me mad. Though a lot of them, and I stunt too, so a lot of them are flex. I might get like a thousand dollars to one, put a hundred. Like I got a big amount of money. Yeah, and a lot of people are stunt. So dudes will be flexing that they got this, this. So when you run down on them with that work, you jack them. They ain't got what they say they got. Mm. Now you be like, man, you around here playing. I ain't gonna kill you now because I'm gonna let you live because I'm, you gonna have to, you gonna re up and get back on your feet. I might double back. What's the most you ever heard that was on your head? A hundred grand. A hundred grand. Yeah. You Did you know where it was from? Up. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like him to this day. I respect him, but I don't like him to this day because he be doing a lot of capping. Who was that? Master P. Master P. Yeah, bro. Damn. Um, it was a rumor. It was a rumor that I had killed his cousin. Yeah. So it started from 15000 30000 to 100000 He wanted to have a meeting. He tell a story that him and I met up at a park. I didn't know him. He didn't know me. I knew who you was because you started from the Cali and came down with that Down South Hustlers. Yeah. Music. And I was supposed to be in that Bowdy movie before I fell out with them. So, but we never met in the park. He kept about that because at that time I was young and wild. I would have aired that park in him. Anyway. <laughs> so, um, but he had the money. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And, he he was trying to send him. He mm. was trying to send him. His cousin used to cut my hair. How many times did you feel like came from that way? Like that you got that um, you nobody let me tell you what's crazy, bro. When I was beefing with his cousin, when I was beefing with the Calio project, yeah. we never took pop shots at each other. Mm. Every time we up, we pulling the trigger. Either somebody dead or somebody get hit up. Gotcha. So nobody never uh shot at me long, this hit me up, you know. Because they knew if they came pump faking that and you miss me, you're the target. Yeah. Now I'm on your top like a koofy. So um, I never experienced somebody coming in and shoot me, shooting up my car while I'm in. Now they hit my infinity truck up when my brother then was in it. Because mm. I was the only one in the city with that. I was the first one in the city with that truck. Yeah. And I'm telling my brother, bro, don't go around the Calio. White at the top, gray at the bottom, mirror tents, them chrome broader rims. I got a license plate with my picture on it with I'm jealous of myself. Damn. Bro, y'all y'all know we be with the yo. Why you go with the boys? Ain't no coward. They ate that truck up. They ate my Shit. little SUV out bad, bro. But, uh, but yeah, bro, I've never experienced that. Somebody hitting at me. Them dude really was trying to lay me down because they knew they couldn't come playing. Well, P really, other than, because, of course, P went to the Bay. Mm -hmm. It came back to New Orleans. Was P really clouded up like that in New Orleans? Like, did he have that respect in New Orleans like that? No. Um, he's out the Calio Project. He got a little money. But that was it. Like, his name wasn't ringing in the city. Like, oh, Master Pete, my, oh, Percy. Yeah. No. He did his little thing in his little area. Gotcha. But he wasn't stepping and no. Nah. It wasn't until he got on with no limit that he started pushing his weight. So g give it this, because I know I'm jumping around a little bit. Mm -hmm. So Big Boss Records. Cash Money Records, No Limit Records. Who was buzzing in the city first? Big Boy? Big. Okay, no, you got Cash. All right, No Limit was in California. Okay. So you got Big Boy Records and you got Cash Money Records, the two local labels. Got you. But then you had Take Four Records too, a Jubilee Records, but the gangster rapper was Big Boy and, uh, well, Cash Money had the gangster rapper and Big Boy had Mr. Cool. I think they had a boot camp clip up. They had some. Who was you and LV with? Cash Money. Got you. Okay. So. When P came down with the Down South Hustlers stuff, then he started grabbing artists from down here because he started from, he was smart though. He started from that West Coast and worked himself because the South, my home. Yeah. I'm going to start somewhere else and work my way back home. Yeah. That's what he did. So, but when you came to NO, it was only Cash Money and Big Boy Records. Gotcha. Tearing it up then. Like I say, Tate Four, dude, in Jubilee, he had the, the song, the bounce song, the dancing song, Girl Shaking a Buck. He had that going. But, uh, 
big boy. And then Pete wound up getting all big boy artists, majority of his artists, and part of Motor No Limit. Gotcha. That's why he had that powerhouse over there. But he didn't get, as a matter of fact, he didn't bring Cannon Abel with him. He brought Mystical. Mia X, I don't think Mia X was, uh, I don't think Mia X was with, uh, um, you go. Cool. Uh, watch for my uh, prayer, prayer time. Um, I, I don't think Mia X was with Big Boy Records. I think the Ghetto Twins was with them. They had that song, Mama's Hurting Baby. Yeah. They, well, I think they wound up signing with rapper. I'm not sure about that. But uh, yeah, then when P come down, brought that in the 9 and 9. Yeah. And just took over, took the uh, South by storm. Took it all over. Yeah. So at this time, okay, so Cash Money is doing this thing. How, oh, well, let me go back. Calio Projects versus, what, what popped off that beef? Okay. Um, or the we, war, as you can say. It's crazy you say that because we were friends. We were tight. Like, we, was, we used to trade beef. Mm. Like, we were like, say if I'm beefing with somebody in the mouth or yeah. somebody wherever. And- or if it's a hit out and we and I can't get to them, they come in the catio getting that dope, getting that heroin. I might hit one of my, what's up? You be seeing Sussa come do that? Yeah, look, go ahead and crush it for me. And, and if somebody come back here, who you, whatever, you can't touch, I'll touch it for you. Oh, damn, I was just training it off like that. Yeah, we was tight, but we was running good, bro. We, I mean, we had a nice run. And then somebody in their project got touched and they thought it was a Sterling Mosquito and myself. And so it happened. Me and Mosquito wasn't running at the time, mm. but it's still my brother. Yeah. So I go in the catio. It's Randall. Um, these other three dudes, they're still out. Still living, so I don't, I'm not going to call yeah. them. But they out here, right? Bro, they got a bat. You know the basket that you go to the grocery store? Yeah. That's on a, laying on the ground, so I'm sitting on it. No, 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 I'm standing up. The little dude sitting on it, he fussing about... Somebody else getting more sales than him and Randall telling me you gotta be paid out of that. But Randall kind of acting funny, like, I gotta go, I gotta go. And I, I and I, I can read Bible and I, I know how Slim is. Because yeah. Slim one of the ones, if he mess with you, he's gonna show love. He's not gonna cross you. Yeah. But he's not gonna stop his people from whacking you. Yeah. So, and I trust him, so I'm in the catio because of him. But he leaves. And I don't leave. I don't know, bro, I'm just stuck back. I'm here. I mean, I'm in the white Lexus with the gray at the bottom. We just call it the bubble. The G3 at yeah. the GS 300 Lexus back then. So, um, I don't have no gun on me at this time, man. And it's night. I hear they got two payphones across the street. I hear the payphone go off, right? So they got a 24-hour window that's still open. And we decided to go across the street to the across the street to the store by the little 24-hour the little window. One of the dudes jump on the payphone, right? I go to get on the other payphone to call my people and say, hey, because I just had a feeling. Cause I, you know how, like, say like I'm sitting here. And I look at you like this on the eye, like, like, what's up? Like, I give you that look. And I peeked the little dude looking at his, at his man, like, man, what's up? Oh, man, son, man, right. So we go across the street, and I go to grab the payphone and call one of my people to let him know that, hey, I'm in the Calio back here with this one, this, this wall out here. Well, boy on the phone tell me, oh, man, that phone don't work. I just heard that phone ring. So now he on the phone. Oh, yeah. Uh huh. Oh, all right. Oh, yeah. Like, you know how you could tell? Yeah. Like, like it's like it's a fake conversation going yeah. on. I say, give me, uh, tell him to call his number for me on three way, cause I want to see if he read on his phone. Yeah. Uh, you got three way? No, dog, they don't got three way. Oh, there's a lady now. Everybody got three ways. <laughs> Man, they trying to bake a cake for me, bro. When he said they didn't have three way, I say, oh no, they trying to get. I say, oh man, I left my money in the car. So I, I said, man, I'll be right back. I, I jog right across the street, jump in that car, pew, shot off. Bro, wasn't like the next day or two days later, they killed my best friend Mosquito back there. Hit him 20 some times. Damn. Then, it was crazy. Because I was kind of mad with Mosquito about uh, doing drugs. So, he in the, in the in the project. And I woke up. What's, what's, he said, man, I was looking for it. I said, what's up? Man, my, my, my girlfriend got a tool with the old boy back there on the Olive Branch. Now, I was living back there at the time, around the corner from the Olive Branch. I said, well, come on, because I'm like, I'm ready to go home anyway. Come on, let's go back and see what's up. So we go back to strap up, we go back there. We don't see nobody. I said, all right, man, drop me a home. So I go, I was living on 4th Street, right around the corner from the Ida Brands. That's what Wayne rap about. I go inside, bro, shower, put, put my pajamas on, lay down, phone ring. They just killed Mosquito in the, in the cat. I said, nah, Mosquito, drop me up. They just killed Mosquito in the 
He had, well, he had the gun on, he just left. I called the Cali, called the payphone. One of the big dogs get on the phone, I said, yo, uh, what's up? I don't know, man, it's a hit mosquito. I said, he dead? I don't know, hold on. Pass the phone to the next dude. Yeah, bro, I was trying to fan. I said, bro, is he dead? I don't know, hold on, pass the phone. Everybody, I don't know, right? Call my brother. Come get me. We go in the Calio. Bro, we walk in the Calio. It's a driveway. I walk up. My best friend, land, like, see how I could walk up right now by you? Yeah. He laying down on the ground like he's trying to reach for his gun. But I'm standing right here looking at him. I mean, he hit all up. I always figured he laying on his back. And over here in the cut over the Calio boy standing over there, they in the huddle over here. Mosquito, baby mother, all them over there crying and hollering over there. So I'm looking at my, 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 my brother on his ground. And I'm looking at them and I'm like, nah, I asked y'all, I don't know what he did. And y'all told me, y'all, and I'm walking, I can see right here, he gone. Yeah. It's over with. Oh, y'all playing them crackhead games? All right, I got you. And it was up from there. It was up from there. Yeah. We just, and you think they had something to do? Is it more so? They did. They, yeah. they didn't want to hit him. Yeah. I, let me say it was crazy. It's a it's a female I respect her to this day, right? Bad, red, thick, fine. I was having sex with her. So she said, Why you still be by the boys and I say, Cause I'm cool, man. Ran a cool, I'm cool. You know they killed your best friend. I say, How you know that? I, so what happened, she in the mix of all this, but she wouldn't set me up and wouldn't set them up. Yeah. But she was like, let me know, boy, you tripping. They killed your friend. It wasn't, bro. I, I didn't find out for sure who the who the shooters were. Until 2007. Damn. This happened in 96, 90, 96? 96. I didn't find it until 2007 when, who, who killed my best friend. Was you shocked when you found out who it was or you weren't surprised about it? Um, no. There was some young, they had sent their little young pups. But I was like, wow. One dude dead, now, nah, two still alive. Right until this day, right? But I was like, oh yeah. I was like, wow. You know? But back then I would have never expected Suspect those three. Yeah. I would have thought it would have been the major players. Yeah. Because you know? the cat had a bunch of little youngsters. Them little boy was trigger happy. Man, listen, them little youngsters, they was going, you know? So, um, yeah, I was shocked, but not really because I was like, yo, they out there, yo, they ran with them, and everybody want to prove to the big homies. When I say big homies, I just, you know, I just, I just learned that word so I was in prison. Before. Yeah. they big homeboys that, um, you know, they, they, they a shooter, you know? So, um, Get in and kill my best friend for nothing, bro. And do 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 you feel like for for Wayne and, and I know I'm jumping around because I know, I don't want to hold up all the time, but Holly Grove in that area where Wayne is from, it, it was a time like where um like Holly Grove represented Wayne heavy right now, but it was a time when Juvenile and Skip was um dissing them. Is that true? Yeah. See, that's the thing, bro. Um, that's why when I make my videos, I get on Birdman about that because Birdman will let you know. Juvenile diss me, Wayne diss me, BG diss me, Turk diss me, fresh. But you forgive all them, you won't forget Turk. Um, yeah, because you know, I wanna say Juvenile left first. Mm. So Juvenile making this song, he dissing, he dissing and Wayne there. Yeah. You yeah. remember when they had that stunt like my daddy? You know what I'm saying? So yeah. Wayne holding cash money down now. So everybody gone, Juvi gone, BG gone, Turk gone. But BG was dissing him too. Yeah. He say, uh, I would I would never he say, uh, F baby and rabbit. I was your part before they had you. Mm. That would BG tell Wayne. Yeah, but they all was dissing one another and now they back together. It, is is Wayne from Holly Gold or is he from the East? No, he's born and raised in Holly Grove, but they moved to the East. Mm, okay. He went to, you know, a school in the East, but he's born and raised in Holly Grove. Gotcha. That's, you know, Pretty much like me, I'm born and raised in Gertown, 17 Ward. Yeah. But I repped the Magnolia because that's where I got my name, my fame. You know, I was a little young boy. Yeah. But I let people know, no, I'm not from the Magnolia, I'm from the 17 Ward. I already made that known I was born and raised here. Yeah. I repped the Noe because that's where I got my name at. That's where I made my bones at. There's no you. What, what is it that Turk, because GD recently did an interview with, um, with Birdman, with Baby, and BG Home. And talking about the Hot Boy tour, and he, he, he Birdman said, I can't promise everybody going to be on the tour. Loon to Turk not being on there. What is it that was said or did that Turk is getting excluded from the tour? Because I hear Turk say he ain't never said nothing bad about Birdman. Go to Drink Champ. Remember the Drink Champ interview Turk did? Yeah. Remember when Turk was talking about the watches? 
go go look at the big uh the big timer thing. See if that say Rolex. Uh, when we used to be in New York, Brave got all these million. He used to bring me and Wayne home fake Rolex watches. We had the Genevas. We had the fake watches. Da da da. People looked at the Cash Money fan looked at it like, "What are you doing too much, bro? Don't talk about our business. Talk about you." Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Even though even though we did have this fake it till you make it, let us tell that story. You and then when he told a story about Wayne, Wayne baby mother catching the, the crab yeah. or whatever. That's disrespectful because people's looking at it like, man, that man got a daughter now, and you putting out no, don't put talk about you. Yeah, you know what you experienced, what you had going on. Because let me, and I, I remember this. I remember busting up in the hotel room with Juvie in the bed, with Turk in the bed, under the cover with two bras. We stacked the cover back, they fully clothed with their tennis shoes on and clothes. I said, <laughs> man, y'all gonna lose y'all ghetto license. You know what I'm saying? So talk about them fun times. Yeah, you know. So a lot of people feel they he he rubbed them the wrong way. Do you think it was that bad to be unforgivable, like no. to be cut off? No, I think it just because it just happened recently. Mm. So it's like this is this fresh, fresh. It's a fresh wound here. Yeah, I don't like what you did, and but with cash money being still in the spotlight, so it's like man, I ain't forgiving you. And here's the thing: think about this. You got the four hot boys. Yeah. Now I'm about to give you a rundown. Let's take Wayne. Yeah. Mega star, big dog, plenty solo. Uh, solo hits. Yeah. Wayne could bring a bag to a baby. Facts. Hey, we got Juvie. Still got his swag. Still got the the people my age crowd still gonna support Juvie. Yeah. Juvie still could bring baby a bag. BG just got out the feds. So they looking for him to be the next gangster rapper to bring back that gangster yeah. finesse all them young boys. Juvie, BG could bring him a bag. What could Turk bring him? Turk been home about 10 years now. Yeah. Think about it. So baby look at him. I ain't forgiving you. I can't make no money. I can only put money in your pocket. Mm. I'm not about to put money in your pocket. You been around here talking crazy to me. You done sued me for the one point. Oh no, I don't know. Let me get it. You know, we say one point too many, but they always well, you you from New Orleans, you ain't got your accident well, one perm. Right. I want one perm. Two million. So uh he sued. So you know, baby, if they Birdman feels some type of way, bro. Yeah. He one of them stubborn. He, he, he say I'm under the old law. Uh, I'm standing on business. But let me just say this. Here. Let me jump over here, bro. Because I saw this video, how you put the press down on my homeboy, Giddy, bro. And I was running, <laughs> bro. I kept hearing you. What, what? I hear that voice, right? So now I put the, the, the face, the body with the voice. You a big guy, bro. Yeah. So I ain't nobody trying to be up in no room with you talking. Hey, are you contradicting I'd, yourself? Yeah, but I'd have been like, hey, Giddy, listen, bro. Now I see... <laughs> Bro, I would have, man, bro, you like a football player, man. Ain't nobody about to be in here. Yeah, I'll be y'all copy <laughs> dippers. Let me get up out of here. You know what I'm saying? Let me let him make it, bro. Nah, um, and so, and I, I can see that, though. Like, Birdman, because if Wayne committed the same sin that Turk did on Dream Champs, you're going to forget that. Because you can go, you, people, if they see a hot boy tour and Wayne out there, the tour may not go right. Facts. But the tour without... Turk, I hate to say it, but it will continue to go on. Nobody yeah, is. Ain't nobody gonna miss that. They ain't yeah, gonna miss that. I can see that. They're not. Because, like, you know, Turk, Turk was on, in my opinion, two hot songs that they had. That was that. And he then they took them off that. The Bling Bling. It yeah. was on the original Bling Bling. Yeah. Then Wayne got on that. And on I Need a Hot Girl. That's the hardest verse on that boy. That's what I'm saying. Well, I like BZ verse on that. You like BZ? Yeah, because he, he snapped. He was talking about my baby mother, too. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I go to jail, she take the charge, he press one for a player. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, but Turk snapped on it. But think about it. Other than that, that's it. You ain't got no other really, like, you know what I'm saying? But I me personally, I want to see Turk on it because this is the first time in years that all four of them home at the yeah. same time, bro. Um, I think they need to work something out with him. Like I said, I think Turk, only thing Bert, he wants you to kiss his butt. He he on something like I'm really on this Don Carleon yeah. stuff. So Come kiss my ring, apologize to me, go get me a little coffee or whatever I want to drink, um, and we can make up. And yeah. You ain't going to get a lot of money on this tour. You know what I'm saying? You're going to make some money, but you ain't about to make what Wayne ain't going to make. We know that. Yeah. You ain't, ain't going to let you make what you've been making. Yeah. And you ain't going to make a Birdman getting. He gonna, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, But you're going to get you some money. Why do you think such a red carpet was rolled out for BG and not Turk when Turk came home? That's the same thing I said, bro. I was like, because 
Baby feel like BG been gone 11 years, so that, that stuff you dissed me, and before you left, we was kicking it. Turk, you just come home, you on these podcasts, you doing these interviews, you violating me, and I got an image. But it, before he come home and get on podcasts, why wasn't it the fanfare? Like, we saw BG come down the escalators. Mm -hmm. We saw the partners there. We saw the, the gifts and the fanfare. Before BG, I mean, before Turk even tried to violate Birdman, why didn't we see that? Was there already friction before Turk yeah. went to jail? Yeah, Birdman gotcha. said they wasn't friends before when Turk. You know, he, Turk was dissing them too uh, on that Biggie beat. But when all of them dissing, yeah, one BG? Yeah, but his favoritism because, like I told you, all of them still could bring money, yeah. money to my pocket. I, Cause that's like with me, if I like, 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 like now, um, I've been home. Nobody embraced me. Nobody gave me love. Nobody co-signed me. I had to build my channel from the ground yeah. up, right? But if Birdman called me today, yeah, what's up, bro? Because he could put money in my pocket. But if it was the other way around, I don't want to talk. Yeah. Because I'm feel like man, y'all wasn't there for me. You know, when I was in my struggles. So, so break this down for me, for you. Um, you getting sentenced, you went to prison, you eventually got sentenced to life for life something you was ne never tried before. Two, two homicides, right. Got you. Right. So how did you get out? Because I hear a whole bunch of different stories. So what exactly was it? it was, all right, when Donald Trump signed the First Step Act yeah. in uh, 2018, we had a thing which was called um, compelling um, an unreason, unreasonable circumstance where you can file to the court and say, hey, Back in the days when I got locked up, my sentence was mandatory. Mm -hmm. Now the, the the guidelines are advisory, so I'm asking you to resentence me because I got these certificates, I got this, this, and I got all this, right? What my situation is, every time I file motions, something to the court, the, the prosecutor's over with Yana, he got these murders, he never apologized to the court, he never did this, this, this. So I'm like, all right, they playing these games. Okay, I got something for him. I had somebody I was cool with, at the because I had a, a, a female that was in... Tulane going to, uh, it was in college to take a number law. Yeah. And um, her and I said, mess around and this judge. So she wound up becoming a DA. And then I had a guy that I was cool with, was a D, uh, was a homicide at the time. So I was able to get them and get me immunity and give up a bunch of homicides. Well, they let, well, how the guy go in the feds is you could get a rule 35, no matter how long you've been incarcerated, you can help any law enforcement, as long as they write a letter saying, hey, he helped with this, he helped close all this, they'll put that in. Give you credit for it. Yeah, it's called Rule Thirty Five. Now, when I filed my motion uh, under the compelling and unreasonable circumstances, that hey, I've been y'all gave me life for two homicides, never indicted a child for these murders. You know, if I go to if I would have went to if I'd have got indicted the right way or went to trial, you would never find me guilty. Yeah, even the judge says that my sentencing right, but he said by the preponderance evidence because the dual order recorded on my co defendant. Well, anyway, so when I filed this motion. The two level reduction came out in 2014. They made it retroactive 2015. Whereas if you had a drug case, and like I was at level 38, I could go to level 36. You get you get two levels, they cut your time. Yeah. But because I had an 840, the kingpin status, it wouldn't apply to me. Mm. But it applied to my co defendant Blabber because he had just the regular drugs and they enhanced us for the murders. But this is what happened. This is how he got it. Because when they gave us, they gave him 40 years for the two bodies, they gave me life for the two bodies. But when he filed the appeal, they say, okay, this is not relevant conduct, meaning these two murders wasn't relevant to their drug conspiracy. So what the judge did, they hit us on the 481.3 saying, your criminal history, that y'all was this volley, y'all stayed in trouble, so we're going to enhance you this way because of these murders. Yeah. And gave us life. Under that statute, we could still get the two-level reduction. My co-defendant went, and he had got 40, 40, 40 80 months, 40 years. And in uh, 99, when we got locked, we first got sentenced. And in 2000, he got resentenced to 400 months. So when I filed my appeal in 2002, I'm thinking I'm about to go get 30 at least because I don't have a bad record. 25 the low end, 30 at the top end. The judge said, by the, the prosecutor said, Young, how can we let a man back out on the street? He want to apologize to the court about the murder because I got the leadership role. Yeah. But in my sentence, all my stuff, public records, in my sentencing hearing, the judge tell my co defendant Blabber, I believe you orchestrated the murder. I believe you, these were your guns. You did all this, but you still give him a time cut. You don't give me one. Why? Because they wanted me, because somebody, how the Fed go, whoever cooperated with the Fed, they take down all this stuff. Yeah. So they want me to tell on Baby and Slim on some stuff that I don't know nothing about. Yeah. Then it's that, it's rumored that I invested in cash money. So they got this in my paperwork. In my facts, all this public records, they could pull it up. They say that 
he 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 agreed to invest it in a recording company. I said, no, nah. I told him, I ain't pleading to that. So they waived that. They didn't throw it out. I will find out later on when I start studying law. Waive me. If I want to come back and cooperate later, I can say, yeah, I invested in cash money. Yeah, I gave him this, this, this much money. But on my bed, bro, Baby Slim held me down. So I'm like, I'm never going to lie on them. I never put them in jail. There's yeah. certain things you're just not going to do. I'm not going to do. Yeah. So I'm, I'm beating my time, beating my time, and I'm peeping out stuff, and I found me a way. So now, um, I, and here's the thing, I never say I got out oh, just by telling on the day. People just took that little part when I say I gave up, and I did. This is true because BG and I had dissed me about this. They made a video about it when I gave up, when I gave up uh, the homicide with me and Sterling did. Yeah. Now, uh, they they didn't like that, right? So people take that apart and say, oh, he said got all this tell on day. I never wanted to correct it because my thing is this. Good or bad, it still helps me. Yeah. My name's still out there. I'm still going to get interviews. People going to still talk about me. Yeah. Oh, no, they ain't. So I'm like, hey, let's run with that. So did you tell on the living? No. No. No, I never told on nobody that's a lie. Okay. But now... Once uh, Hassan Campbell, a few other people started saying, no, he told me he do this, he told us this. And I'm like, I ain't never been to this jail. I never been to this spot. I say, oh, all right, well, I'll tell you what. Some people going to believe this. Some people not going to believe this. My thing is I'm not going to entertain it all the way because if I go and say, yes, I did this or no, I did it, if I try to prove my – if I get my paperwork, my certificates and say, okay, I was in this jail at this time, this time, it's impossible for me to be that. I don't have no more interview. I don't have nothing else. Yeah, gotcha. It's you. over for me. Gotcha. I remember baby telling me you only get five minutes of fame because people ain't going to want to just keep hearing the same story. Yeah. So um, I had a, a, a female I should be dealing with where she's be like, well, this could help me go viral. This could help me go viral. This could help me go viral. So it's like, look, we could do this. We could do this. They're already saying is this. Let's put this paper. I'm like, no, nah, man, I don't want to do I don't want to do that. No, nah, I don't want to do certain things. I just was like, no, nah, I don't want But some kind of way it still gets out, right? So now I be like, well, they saying they already say you're a rat. They already say you told. I right, let them say that. So, so you never at any time tried to put it on hot bezo, bezo. Is that your... oh hot bezo? Hot bezo. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Now that's what we beefing about. Now here's the thing. I've been waiting for somebody. I was about to do an audio about. I mean, I was gonna do a, a video about this, right? Because hot goes to. This is my first time telling this story. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. I was about to do this on my channel, too. Hot goes to this, allegedly, go to this female. Say, hey, I wasn't trying to hit your little brother. I was trying to hit this other guy. Mm -hmm. My bad. This female go to the police. So it's a police report. I got the police report at my house. And it's public records. Yeah. But Hot gives this, tell her this statement. She tell it to the police. Blabber in the jail with the dude bragging about homicide, whatever he bragging about. They take what Hot said in this Porsche report, what Blabber said, because I got the boss role. Yeah. I got an 848. It's continuing criminal. I got five more workers. Okay, you're going to get the life. Hot got three years. Hot didn't get none. He already got sentenced. Mm. Blabber got the 40, but I was the one punished the most because I had the boss role. But I did all these hits. I didn't tell y'all them people go do this or that. So now while I'm in jail, right? I got a lawyer. A jailhouse, I got a street lawyer, jailhouse lawyer. I learned this. The jailhouse lawyers are the best lawyers. Yeah. Now, the jailhouse lawyer, he like, man, you need to go ahead and let the courts know what happened this year so you can close that so when you file, they can't say you ain't take responsibility. I'm like, nah, man, because I don't want to have to go to court. I'm not going to be doing that. I don't want this. Because, you know, when you start cooperating and that paper hit certain compounds, you can't live on certain compounds. Especially them pins. They trying to kill you, beat you up, stab you. They trying to dog you, right? I'm like, nah, I ain't doing that. So I was hanging in the library. I said, have them do search stuff for me, sign all. Go ahead, send that, send that, send that in. Or I get it, send it to my lawyer, stuff like that. So he put the uh, affidavit together. And like I said on Vlad, I'll take full, responsib uh, full responsibility for the uh, affidavit going to the courts because he sent it in. He, the, the jailhouse lawyer, sent it in for me, but my name's still on it. and I take responsibility for that. I'm not mad about that because here's the thing. Hot already hadn't told a girl the story. Yeah. So that's already in the police report. Blab already on recording, bragging about whatever. 
they got this. They got his record. I got the transcript at my house right now. As we speak. Yeah. So, how am I telling on these two when they already told? They already mm. told people this already in documents, already in black and white. The story. Yeah. So now because I come to the face and say, hey, okay, yeah, I did this here. Yeah, I take my responsibility. This one already home. This one, so that well, hot locked up. They charge him. They need me to go to grand jury. I'm like, no, man, I'm scared of my life. I ain't doing that. I ain't going to grand jury. Get, he get released. But now it helps me because, see, a lot of people don't know this. Blava wrote me a letter, and I've told Blava, look, man, I got to make this play. I'm going to move this. Blava wrote me a letter and say, man, do whatever you got to do. Let brother get out of jail. Now he out, and he running, he be playing both ends. So he telling people, yeah, gangster told on me too. Blabber, the dude, you the dude wore the tape recorder, you the reason I got the life. <laughs> so I told on you, <laughs> you the reason I got the paperwork, I got all this. But I was like, I said, you know what? I'm tired of being a bad guy. I'm about to just let the people know this. Was, and I was just about to do a story called The Big Three, The Rise and Fall of the Big Three, and put out, I got my uh my PSI where they say how bees with my right hand man. I got all this in my paper. I was, going, I was just about to do a story here. You just asked me about it. <laughs> hey. Yeah, I was just contemplating doing this the other day, bro, because I got all the paperwork to show when I told a girl this. They used that statement. You were blabbing the recording. Yeah, because a gangster don't want the people could. Bro, you threw me in this. Yeah. So out of all of it, what is Birdman more mad at you about? Is it the the dead, telling on the dead part? Is it this part because your signature is on this paperwork? What is that, the, the that? part with that? He really, you know, it's like the day he really ain't tripping is the the is that statement, and you know him and Hot Cool, so me and Hot beefing now, so it's like me and Hot been running for twenty years now, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And I stand on business, so I respect that. That's yeah. why I'm not mad with him because if I'd have came on honorable man and one of them blab or something else with this, I'd be saying the same way, like man, I don't respect that. No, no, you should have did that, period. Yeah. Your name should, I don't care, even if they had this kind of information, your name should not be tied to none of your seat. No, so I, I respect it. I understand it. Yeah. So all I can do now is troll them back and get paid for it. Do, do you ever talk to Birdman now? No. Not no. now. No. Because Queen Friends, yeah, ex boo. Mm -hmm. I was waiting for you to put this. Yeah. <laughs> And she got you on the recording, uh, you talking to Birdman on the phone. So what, what happened with that video right there? Actually, that wasn't Birdman. Okay. That was my homie, Paul Spook, right? But she, see, here's the thing with her. You see when she said, he's be recording, bro, when he first he ain't know how to work the phone. So now, if I ain't know how to work the phone, I know when I be on the phone, when I be talking, I see her on the phone, right? Yeah. So I'm thinking she might be on the phone doing something, but all right, she recorded me. You mm. sneak, record me all this stuff. I never put this up. You just put this stuff out. I didn't even know you had that. Yeah. Why well, I don't have it. I would have loved it, like, all right, bird boy, look, I got something, boy, you better drop the bag off or I'm going to let the world. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of stuff, bro, she love attention, right? She's, I'm talking about she a freak for, for attention. And when at when we got into it about her chilling for this dude that I was going at it with online, I said, well, you know what? You do you, I'm going to do me. I didn't let her go to New Orleans for my uh, movie casting. I didn't let her be... I didn't give her a shout out in real life. I didn't bring her to real life. I bought Fat Girl 504 cooking to my partner, my little bro, Flash. Yeah. And I didn't shout her out. And she told me, she said, yeah, um, a guy hit me on Instagram and told me, uh, you don't shout me out no more, and you just use me, and um, you 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 real bossy, and you controlling. Yeah. I said, well, that's what this is about. You jealous? I said, well, I said, a YouTube channel. I said, I built that from the ground up. I own that, right? She said, yeah. I said, my movie that we putting together right now, this is my life story. I'm paying for it out of my own pocket. I said, so I have a right to say if I want to work with you or not, I can have a right to be up with bosses do, hire and fight. Yeah. I said, you said I'm being controlled. I said, this is controlling. If I say, friend, let me see your phone. Who you texting? Who you calling or where you going? That's control. She said, yeah, you right. I said, so all this about because I don't want to have you a part because she got the agency. She want to be able to post all... Oh, I, I was part of this movie to get her other clientele. Yeah. But at the end of the day, you acting like a child because you saying you made me holler in there. Well, make another. Like Hov said, you made Hov make another one then. So did, did you, because she was claiming that you was beating on her. Hmm. Bro, I've never had a fight with a woman. I had a, in middle school. Yeah. Like, that's not my thing, bro. And my thing is this, because everybody, even me, was waiting for this, right? She was saying, oh, he did it to me. Why she never showed it? Mm. Whenever anybody who get into it, they people, 
when they go on their platform, they're going to post the evidence, show people yeah. what happened. But I would say this, bro, because this is an open situation now. I got proof that she don't know I have. That she got a lot of people believing her out of this, this, but bro, this girl is a compulsive liar, bro. It wasn't until all this unfolded that one of my people started digging in her background and seeing where she got four domestic violent cases. Mm. She been to the Fed for fraud in 2010. And then when she say, I'm from Baltimore, I should have never worked with you before, right? Newsflash, you got to do with life in 20, 100 something years for murder. She, she told on somebody. Whoa. Yes, the, the the stuff out right now. It's out it's, it's out the bag. It's out now. She told on she telephoned some other dude for uh auto for uh, some car fraud. Yeah. So now you got this world thing, you this nice sweet person, and here you got your backyard dirty. But you jumping on to me. I'm from Baltimore. I should never work with you because you a rat. You a mini mouse. <laughs> you got somebody, you want it's her own people. Yeah. In jail right now in Maryland for a body. Damn. I just found this out, bro. Cause I ain't cause like I never was like, I didn't care nothing about all that. And bro, this is the crazy part about it. This girl been around me a year and something, bro. Living a lie. She say, I'm about to go to Baltimore to see my auntie. All right, I ain't tripping. So when she come back, my people tell me, oh, you know that girl being sued, right? She went to court in Baltimore. I say, huh? I said, no, not her. Yeah, she did. I was like, oh, so she lied telling me she's going to see her auntie, her auntie sick, all the while she got a court date. Damn. So you be trying to tell me, oh, you lying, you Capola, you do this, and all the while, it's like, you know how somebody point the finger, you got three point back at you? Yeah. Because everything I'm talking about is public records. So it's not like something that I seen and, and nobody don't know about. Pull her name up, it's in Baltimore. Francine Denise McNair. And all her records are going, I'm like, whoa. I was around a gangster. I was around somebody, uh, a wolf in sheep clothing. Damn. Man, bro, so when I seen that, I, I felt sorry for her, bro. Did she actually call the police and try to put a case on you? Uh, after all, like, I guess y'all beef unfolded? Yeah. Damn. She really doing, yeah. Yes. And Damn. I'm like, it was, 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 was puzzling me is that you telling all these people that you was laid out for all these days, but you're in the strip club. You're going live. Bruh, she po listen, she tell her friends she had to lay down for three days, she couldn't move. But yet, in her story, she posted when she was in the strip club, they were making the rain in that day. She in there bobbing and dancing. Damn. Somebody screenshot it, got it. That same week she was hurt, laid out, she in my house on live. She forgot about that. Damn. Yeah, she ain't cover the trash, bro. She looking bad, bro. It's so much. I don't, it's too much that I can't really give up right you. now, but it's going to come out. Hey, before we got in here, we in on this. Uh, Boosie. Mm-hmm. Boosie, Boosie, boo. Boosie, pop. Um, I recently interviewed my guy, Dollface, out of Detroit. Shout out to Dollface. Yeah. And uh, Dollface, you know, he went off. You know, Dollface, a certified street nigga, been in prison, all this mm -hmm. stuff. But he did, he created, coined this term, selective gangsterism. Mm -hmm. And how Boosie was willing to go off on T.I., everybody else about snitching. But when it came to QCP, it's like Boosie threw a white, threw a white flag on that one. Like, ah, yeah, I talk about everybody else, but this one, I'm going to leave alone. And you also called him out on his selective gangsterism. What's, what's the stance with Boosie? I, listen, bro, I'm going to do the first one to let the world know that he's fake, mm. that his money was a stepper, not him. It took a it took a minute because I was fresh. I was a new kid on the block. Yeah. And people were swinging at me. I'm bobbing and weaving, but now people get it. They know that he's not real. You know what I'm saying? That he was he was he was in the streets, but he was sending people. He wasn't doing it himself. Yeah. Um, and like you said, man, if I keep speaking on that, I'm gonna lose my friends. But he contradicted himself because when he got into a T.I., he said, man, I done lost plenty of friends. I don't care. I, I could lose another one. Then he came back and said, man, I felt bad because T.I. was looking out for me. T.I. was doing it. So it's a favorite to them. Millionaires, you ain't going to do that. But, they, you know, QC tied to them streets or whatever, and he got money. So he might feel like, man, I don't want to play with him. Yeah. He might have me touched. I don't know. 
But at the end of the day, the more we see Boosie talk, a lot of stuff come out where you see like, okay, I see the flaw now. I see bro, you're not really, that's not really you. You're not really cut mm. like that. You know, um, it's nothing personal for me. Like I say, I came up on Boosie and I and I greatly appreciate him. Yeah. Um, I'm waiting for my next beef. I, I I got a feeling it's coming, but it's not it's not coming fast enough. Um, you know his main man home, BG. Okay, BG yeah. Made it known. I'm I'm out there for Boosie, and people know me and Boosie on the internet. We we internet ops. So I'm um, if BG jump out there, I'm gonna do like you know how Jesus Christ did the 40 day 40 night fast. Yeah. I'm gonna drop a video every all this. <laughs> man. So do you think B B because BG is a celebratory definitely that BG is home. But the memes been relentless bro, on BG. Shit, bro. BG since he got out. I, let me tell you something. And like I'll say, I got a feeling that we're gonna class eventually because he's still staying on man time and I respect that. But yeah. in his defense now, it's totally disrespect. It's not right. This is a guy that ran with some of the hardest of the hardest in our city. Yeah. He'd have been in some of the toughest, toughest penitentiaries in the Fed, been around some of the most gangstest dudes in the Fed. They don't have nothing bad on his jacket, and for the internet to treat him like that, that's wrong. However, it's a lot of the new generation don't know him. Right. People like me and my age, and you know, little under know him. Yeah. So now the thing is, nobody they doing him like I had to learn. They're not saying, "Do you listen? You got to go on the internet. No, don't play with me. Listen, man, I got this. this, this. Drop these songs. Drop in their face. You taking your time. By that time, them youngsters gonna disrespect you because. You let that go, it's like in a pen, how we used to always say, stop it before it get legs. Meaning like, when somebody start a rumor, it's basically gonna start growing. Growing, yeah. growing, it's gonna spread. Stop it. He ain't doing that. So they gonna just have a field day with him. So now when you drop, oh, that's the Zesty rapper. We don't wanna hear from him. Them youngsters, it's the fans now that control who gonna be hot with the music That's, that's true. So that's you true. got to get them people in check like, hey, that's what it is, I man. be just, you gotta start speaking out. See, he thinking that old way. I done caught on. I know how to end yeah. now. <laughs> so you waiting? You you doing your Birdman hair rub? Waiting for BG? <laughs> oh, <laughs> Johnny Manziel. That's yeah. all I'm doing. Bro. I'm waiting, bro. I got so many videos, so much ideas. I listen. If he jump out there, I'm gonna do him like I did Boost. I'm in because you know Boost had the streets at one now. It's yeah. divided now. The streets. Some people ain't more. When he drop it, oh man, we don't want to hear that. Yeah, I kind of destroy his career with that music stuff. Man, get out of here with that. With Vlad, people we like to he cause Boots is gonna entertain us. Yeah. And I like to see what he say because I'm gonna make a video off it. But I hope somebody get in his ear though, bro, because on one hand, I got some of the streets now. Yeah. Meaning like I'm on some positive stuff, so I'm letting them step in them gangs. No, listen, man, that's fake. He ain't really cause bro, one thing we know, a real street dude, a real gangster not gonna run on the internet and do the stuff and say the stuff Boots have been doing. Yeah. And now he turned right back around and tell on his his uh Baby mother, brother that's dead. And he say, <laughs> I ain't said he dead. Well, hold up. You just got on games about telling him dead. How you going to contradict? But I'm, I am just happy these youngsters seeing this and witnessing it. Yeah. That's my mission to show them, like, look at this stuff. My thing is entertainment. Them, them dudes really trying to sell that they're really gangsters. Yeah. And some of them not, bro. Uh, we end with this because I, I know you're highly spiritual. Uh, or, or you say you're Muslim or whatnot. Mm -hmm. You know, I catch a lot of sight because I'm an atheist, but... <laughs> Um, but are are you Muslim or do you seek religion to find forgiveness for, to right the wrongs that you did? Are you in fear of an afterlife for the things that you did? Like, you know, you already went to prison for some of the stuff you did, mm -hmm. but some of the things that you may have gotten away with, it's a divine justice that you feel like you got an answer to. How do you feel about what 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 is the need for God for you in your life? I guess. Okay, um, as a Muslim, what we believe is once you take shahada, everything you did, the day you take shahada, you're forgiven for. Mm. You, all I'm saying, you're forgiven for. Now, once you become Muslim, everything you do now, you're going to be held accountable for. Um, Islam helped me out a lot because in 2005, I finally uh, stopped cussing, stopped using the N-word. Gotcha. Um, I believe in God because it helps calm me. At one time, if you wasn't a part of my circle, I ain't care nothing about you. Mm. I'm like, man, look, we're going to jack him. We're going to, you know. Now I respect the next person. I have a, I have an ear laying on my shoulder. I will listen to what you got to say now, you know. But at one time I was like, man, look, man, we're going to jack him, man. 
and he ain't, man, forget him, you know, take it. But um, I believe in God um, and because of this. I always look at, like, in our sack inside of us, semen mm -hmm. goes into a woman. Nobody can, t nobody on this earth can say they remember going into their mother's womb. They remember, they remember being a blood clot in their mother's womb. They remember becoming flesh and blood, I mean, bones, skin. And nobody, they don't know that. So it's right. like for all this to transpire and come out, man, I'm like, it got to be a God. Mm -hmm. So me, that's why I believe into it, you know. Um, and I don't try to push my religion on nobody if they want to nobody Islam. Yeah. I'm going to tell, I was an imam at the jail before, and I'm not perfect. Yep. So I be want people to understand that I am not perfect, um, but I pray. I don't. I pray. I haven't since I've been mother. I haven't missed a prayer. I don't so, know why I'm gonna pray. So you took your shahada because you felt like you needed to be forgiven for what you've done. No, I didn't know about that then. Okay. Okay. See, I took shahada in '95 in the state. I mean, my parish jail, yeah. jailhouse. But I didn't learn when I went and did my state bid in '96. So when I come home, I was running with the nation. So I was with the nation from '96 all the way till 2005. Gotcha. I didn't know the different times. I started studying. I was like, oh, okay, the nation believe this. Okay, Sunni must believe this. And I start, so I start really studying, studying, getting into it. And now I know now, you know. Yeah. But I don't um, bash uh, people. Like I, when I was in jail, I used to get out the nation, get out the Christians, uh, Jehovah Witness, anybody. I, I, I would go study the religion on purpose just to have debates with them and argue with them. Yeah. Um, but like, it took a brother to say, hey, come here. Using that state at one time, he said, listen, it's three prongs to the seven ridges. He said, you got to have knowledge what you're talking about. You got to be gentle how you give it to them. And then you got to be patient to see if they take it because you could be awkward with somebody and say, look, and the Bible says this, look, go read it. Ah, I told you now, they're not going to be receptive of it because they're in their feelings and you smash it in their face versus you saying, well, check this out. What do you think about this? Yeah. Have this been changed, blah, blah, blah. But now, um, bro, I just be trying to seek to get closer to God, well, I could be forgiven for all the sins that I'm still committing now because yeah. I'm going to be held accountable for it. Yeah. God is going to question me on the deal of judgment by myself. What's up with this? You did this. this. Yeah, I'm going to be held accountable. I believe that. Do you feel like, is it a fear that you won't be accepted on that day? No. Um, see, this, I know a lot of people, even when I was in the streets, I always felt like this, that I live by the gun, I'm going to die by the gun. I believe that right now, today, that 100 years from now, all of us going to be dead. Yeah. I'm 48. I don't, I don't know about who 148. So um, I know death is promised to everybody. Yeah. So it just, we don't know when, where, and how it's going to happen, but it's coming. What if the Christians are right? Then on the judgment, God going to let us know you was wrong. They were right. I'm like, hey, this is what I had bleed in. Give me another chance. My <laughs> yeah, bad. My bad. <laughs> yeah, I'm saying, bro. <laughs> I'm feeling you know, So, hey, bro. Uh, but, um, yeah, I don't, like I said, I don't disrespect the Christians. Yeah. Um, I know a lot about the Bible. I, yeah. I show them a lot of, you know, a lot of that was rewritten and changed and taken out different Bibles. You get the King James Version, get the New World. They then took out Acts, Acts 8, verse 38. That's removed now in the New Trail. They were like, who told y'all to take out the Bible? Yeah. They said, oh, because that wasn't right. So I know a lot of stuff about the Bible. Uh, Marks and Mark and King James, all of it there. But you go to New World Translation, it start, it go from one to eight, the rest of it gone. Yeah. How y'all gonna take this out? This is supposed to be the Holy Bible. So I got a lot of stuff, but I don't disrespect nobody. Um, yeah. I don't, you know, but if they we want to talk and have a, I can sit down and talk with some of the best of them. Hey, there you go. What? You know. Gangster, man. I appreciate you sitting down with me. We finally got here. Yeah. I finally hey. see this, the man who behind this channel, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah bro. for sure. Oh, uh, hold up. Shout out to what a name who got at me on your channel, bro. Hellcat. Hellcat. Shout uh, out to Hellcat, man. Yeah, shout out to my girl. Hellcat, I don't want no problem, Hellcat, all right? Hey. Uh, uh, <laughs> Hellcat, I don't want no problem. And listen, Hellcat, there's four things I'm scared of. God, AIDS, cracking penis. So no, no man not putting no penis <laughs> in me. Why? Hey, he will. Hey, Terrence, until we meet again. Yes, sir. Peace. Peace, bro.